Luke chapter 23, and I'm going to read some scripture here and bring you the old, old story that never grows old. I'm preaching on tonight five things that were accomplished at Calvary. If you love the Bible and love the Lord and glad you're saved tonight, you'll be blessed uh, by this scripture and by uh, this thought this evening. And so I hope it'll be a blessing to your heart. Luke chapter 23 and look at verse number um, 35. Luke chapter 23 and verse number 35. The worst thing you can do is sit there and say, oh, I've heard about Jesus dying on the cross. I know all about that. That's the biggest mistake you can make here tonight. Don't ever, ever let that become old to you. Don't ever take that for granted. Don't ever say, I've heard people say, tell me something deep, preacher, I've never heard before. I heard of a preacher not long, long ago. He went and preached on a bunch of issues, and people shouted the house out down. And, you know, King James Bible, something like we all believe. And the preached on Jesus dying on the cross, and everybody was quiet. And that's wrong. Priorities are misplaced. The greatest thing that's ever happened in the history of this world was when Jesus bore our sin. And He rose from the grave. Look at verse 35. Luke 23 and verse 35. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided Him, saying, He saved others, let Him save Himself, if He be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked Him, coming to Him, and offering Him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the King of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over Him in letters of Greek, and Latin and Hebrew, this is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. I like to preach tonight on the subject five things. There's lots of them. But five things that were accomplished at Calvary. The day the Lord Jesus Christ bore mine and your sins. What a holy day. What a great day. What a glorious day. There are several things that happened that day. You know the story. They took him up there. They mocked him. They made fun of him. They laughed at him and ridiculed him. The Bible said they literally covered his face with their spit. They spit in his face and covered his face. The Bible said they plowed up his back like furrows and beat him with that, those whips uh, as, as the scourging that you have. Sometimes... When they'd take a man out, during there they'd, they'd put his hands up like that and tie him to the, the wall tie, and tie him there, and his back would be bare and strip him of his robe, and they'd take that whip like that and go, and it'd wrap around his body, and they'd jerk it back like that. And it had bits of glass or, or sharp objects or metal or rock in it, and when they'd jerk it back, it would literally just rip the body of the man. Thirty-nine times of those. And sometimes a man's bowels or inside would just fall out. They'd die before they ever even made it to the cross. That's the way they did. The Lord Jesus Christ for me and you. And you know what? The song we sang a while ago, My Jesus, I Love Thee. That's why we sing a song like that. Nobody ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend as kind as He. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much He cared for me. Glory to God, I'm glad of what He did for us. Then they brought out the cross. 
and they put him down there. They held a hand down like that, took a big old hard, they say rusty nail, probably that long, nine inch. And they put that thing right there. And in the, in the Bible, you always, your wrist is part of your hand. So the, the, the nail was probably right in this area, probably somewhere. Uh, that's calling. Uh, there's, there's Old Testament references where they said put the bracelet on his hand. So the bracelet goes here. So it's counted as part of the hand. And they put the, the Lord there and put the, throw that bone would hold and drove, I mean beat with a hammer, bam, through the flesh of Jesus Christ and then through his feet and then of the crown of thorns on his head. By the time they got through with him, the Bible said his visage, the uh, visual visage was marred. You couldn't even tell what he looked like. By the time they got through with him, you, you didn't even recognize him. You wouldn't have known who it was if you don't. You know, he did all that for you, just for you and just for me. I don't believe men you got too sad a story to tell if somebody loved us that much to save us and take our place on Calvary. And so he did that. And he, he let them beat him and mock him and make fun of him. And then uh, the death on the cross. Well, I have time to go into all of that tonight. But basically, when he did that, and he bowed his head and said, It is finished. Bam! And brother, you know what God did? God said, It's finished. He stayed in the grave three days, his body. His soul went to paradise. His spirit went where? To God. He said, Into thy hands I commend my spirit. His soul went to the lower parts of the earth, emptied out paradise. His body went in the tomb. When his, when his soul come out three days later, he brought captivity with him, those that were in paradise, Old Testament saints, waiting on the redemption of the Savior. All the Old Testament saints of God brought them up with him, and his spirit came back into his body, his soul came back into his body, and up from the grave he arose. And then he stayed here 50 days showing himself to the apostles and disciples and then shot back up to heaven. They've been trying to imitate that ever since and ain't never got it done. And one day he's coming in like manner just like he left. So uh, quickly this evening, five things that were accomplished on that day. Number one, I want to say this evening, the law was magnified. The law was magnified. Somebody said, well, Jesus done away with the law. Well, not, I know what you mean when you say that, but scripturally, the scriptural term is He fulfilled the law. That's the scriptural term. See, nobody ever had done that. Nobody had ever lived by the letter of the law completely. Nobody, not Moses, not Joseph, not Daniel, not David, not Samson, not uh, Joshua, uh, not, not anybody in the Old Testament. Nobody had ever lived the letter of the law perfect. The law wasn't given to save us. The law was, was to bring us to Christ so that we could know that we need to be saved. The law don't save nobody. The law convicts us and shows us that we need to be saved. And brother, the law was magnified. He literally fulfilled it. You know, there's a couple of places in the Bible where he said, he said he magnified the law. Somebody come to him one time and they said, uh, 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 don't the law say thou shalt not kill? And he said, it sure does. But it don't only mean that. He said, if you hate your brother without a cause, you're a killer. You're a murderer. You have murder in your heart. Boy, he didn't, he didn't downplay the law. He, he magnified it. He made, whoa, it's a lot more strict than we thought it was. Uh, somebody come one time and they said, oh, don't it say thou shalt not commit adultery? He said, it sure does. But it goes further than that. It said, if you just look and lust, after you've committed adultery in your heart, right? He magnified that law. He said, you don't have to go out and commit the very act of murder. You can have murder in your heart. You don't have to go out and commit the act of adultery. You can be an adulterer in your heart. But I'm glad, thank God, I'm glad, hallelujah, when they put those nails in His hand, brother, it was just like, thou shalt not kill, pow! Thou shalt not steal, pow! Thou shalt not commit adultery, pow! You know why He took that? He took that because He knew me and you and fell short of the law and the fulfilling of the law. I'm glad to say tonight, hallelujah, that He fulfilled the law for me and you. I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. But I'm telling you, brother, He lived to the letter every single word of the law. Jesus.
is fulfilled. He never took a step out of place. He never put his hand where it wasn't supposed to be. He never had a thought that he shouldn't have thought. Never said a word he shouldn't have said. 100% fulfill the law. Thank God the law was magnified at Calvary. Amen. I'm glad, brother, when it, hey, he done the job, brother. He took care of it. I'm not going to heaven because I keep the law. I'm going to heaven because he kept it for me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I'm glad. You know, if you're if you're an old saved sinner, you'll shout on that right there. Uh, if you're a self-righteous Pharisee that thinks you're good enough, you don't need Jesus, that ain't going to mean much to you. But us sinners, we can shout on that, can't we? Thank God. Even the law was magnified. Number two, let me say secondly tonight, justice was satisfied. Justice was satisfied. Uh, by law, in court, we could not be justified. Wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be just for God to let us go to heaven. Uh, the, see, we're sinners. And the devil holds us up there and says, uh, are you going to let Danny in heaven? And uh, God looks at my life and he says, no, I can't let him in heaven. By, by my own nature, I am just. And I cannot let Danny into heaven. So, when the Lord dies on the cross, he took all Danny's sins everything he'd ever done wrong and put them on here. Now, God, look at Danny. And when God looks at Danny now, he sees the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what you call that, people? It's imputation. You know what imputation means? It means God imputes righteousness to you that you didn't earn and that you didn't deserve and that you didn't do nothing to get and you didn't do nothing except just accept Him. I'm telling you what, I feel a spell coming on. I tell you, I get thinking about stuff. I get to thinking about this once in a while. And buddy, they say, like you said, it starts down in your toes. Amen. I know blah 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 blah. I was a sinner. I was on my way to hell. And you was too. But thank God, as the old song said, justice called, but mercy answered. Amen. Justice called, but mercy answered. Hallelujah tonight. Brother, justice was satisfied. I'll never forget reading about old George Mueller. And George Mueller was a great saint of God. I mean, we're talking 100, 100, 100 years ago. And when he was 16, he was mean as a devil and got put in jail for stealing. George Mueller did. Later, when he went to college at the university, and when he was 20 years of age, he come under the influence of the gospel. Somebody preached to him, and he got under conviction and got saved. He became a new creature. He was mean as a devil, getting in jail, getting locked up, getting in trouble all the time. Something bad happened to him, and that old boy got saved and turned around, and he read the Bible through 200 times, 100 on his knees, and he raised all those millions of dollars to feed them orphans in those orphanages. He who once was a thief, gave away $135,000 of his own money. Of his own money. $135,000, brother, in 1890 was a lot of money. It'd be like $5 million nowadays or more. And you know what? Old George Miller gave that and brother gave it away and read the Bible and prayed and God blessed him. And you know what got him? I mean, they, the devil looked at old George Miller and said he's a sinner, he's a crook, he's a liar, but God saved him, forgave him, and made a saint and a leader out of him. That's what was accomplished when Jesus died on the cross. Justice was satisfied. Number three, I would say that this evening... God was glorified. God got glory out of the death of the cross. Never has there been such a picture of love. I like what old John Newton, the author of Amazing Grace. He is another, mean as a snake. And old John Newton, if you know anything about church history, you understand the life of John Newton. And John Newton was mean as a devil. And buddy, he got saved and wrote the song Amazing Grace. And he's the fella that coined, that come up with that phrase, you hear so many people talk about it. You hear preachers say it a lot. They, they said, uh, you ain't perfect and all that. And he said this. He's the one that come up with this saying. He said, I am not what I ought to be. He said, I am not what I want to be. He said, I am not what I, I hope, to be, I hope uh, to be all the time. But he said, by the grace of God, I am not what I used to be. 
He's the one that come up with that. And it's been quoted a thousand times since then. I'm glad to say this evening, God was glorified. You know, God gets glory when people change like that. God gets the glory when Brother Jimmy comes in here and says, with his family, used to be down there laying down there, not even going to church. Now sitting on the front row of the Bible. Jeremy, same thing. You know what God did? God reached out to Shining Light Baptist Church and got a hold of them guys right there. And Brother Dusty and all y'all, uh, all y'all. You know what? God gets glory when people see your life change. They see your car going down the driveway Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and they see them kids in the back seat. You know what? People say, there must be a God. There is a God. There is a God. Hallelujah! I'm glad to say, brother, God was glorified. Jesus died and God was glorified. Amen. Well, let me say number four this evening. I want to say the fourth thing that happened on Calvary. Hell was nullified. Hell was nullified. Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, don't you ever, don't you ever, ever, ever think God's been bad for you or good, bad to you. Don't you ever think God's done you wrong. Don't you ever think, listen, if Jesus saved your soul from everlasting hell, if He never done nothing else for you one time, it'd be enough for you to shout for a million years if He just saved you from hell. Last I read, there's still a hell. Last I heard, it's still down there. It's still burning. And guess what? Me and you are not going to hell. We're not going to hell, people. We're not going to hell. Thank God I can shout on that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm glad. Thank God. I'm glad I'm not going to hell. I'm not going. Oh, Danny ain't much, but Danny ain't going to hell. Wept a loo. That's what Spanky says. Amen. Old Spanky used to get up and his mama wake him up and say, Spanky. And he'd say, Mom, I don't want to. You poor, unprivileged kids nowadays don't get to grow up watching little rascals. I ain't talking about that stupid movie they made trying to imitate. I know it's the real original little rascal. No, Spanky got up and she said, Spanky he said, Mom, I don't want to get up. Spanky, get up. I don't feel like going to school. She said, Spanky, you don't have to go to school. It's Saturday. A miracle happened. He said, Saturday. Boy, he jumped up and he started putting on his little shoes, that little hat he wore. He went in early, but he said, it's Saturday, it's Saturday. It's Saturday, it's Saturday. That's where I feel tonight. Glory to God, I'm saved, I'm saved. I'm saved, I'm saved. I'm, saved. I'm, saved. I'm not going to hell. When's the last time you just lost your old dignity and hauled off and threw out both hands and said, well, God, God, I'm glad I'm not going to hell. Be good for some of you. Hell was nullified. Somebody said, how do you know that? You sound so sure, Brother Danny. You know how sure I'm not going to hell? Just as sure as He died to keep me out. You know why people don't know they're going to heaven? Because they're trusting the wrong thing. You can try to be good, and you don't know you're going to heaven. You can try to live a good life, and you don't know you're going to heaven. But if you're trusting what Jesus did on the cross, you can know you're going to heaven and not hell. I meet people all the time, well, I just don't know if I've been good enough. I, well, I can tell you right now, you ain't. You ain't. I'm not going to heaven because I'm trying. I'm going to heaven because I'm trusting. Uh, we had that funeral uh, here Friday evening for uh, Chris's uh, mother. And I gave the illustration. There's a lot of people here. I don't know if it's safe or not. So I went ahead and gave an invitation. I said, watch this. Watch me. I'm leaning on this pulpit. I'm leaning. My weight. Yeah, I'm trusting that thing to hold me up. Believe me. If I didn't believe that hold me up, I would not do this in front of y'all. Because I'd bust my mouth on it. Knock out a few teeth or something. That's cherry. That's hard wood right there. But I believe it'll hold me up. Now that's what I'm doing to Jesus with my soul. You cannot let me say it is impossible. 
go to hell trusting Jesus Christ to save you. Cannot be done. You say, well, Brother Danny, what if that ain't enough? It's enough. He said, it is finished. You can't add nothing to it. You can't take nothing away from it. Best thing some of you ought to do is just accept it and shout about it and get busy for God and get somebody else in here to get saved. Amen. Hell was nullified. Number five, salvation was simplified. I've already talked about that. We don't have a religion of do. we got a religion of done. I'm not going to heaven because of what I do. I'm going to heaven because of what He done. That ain't good English, but it, it, you can understand it, can't you? Hey, man, I'm telling you, brother, salvation is of the Lord. I'm trusting, not trying. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I heard people say, well, how, how can you get up there and preach after you've sinned? i tell you how, because I'm not going on my life. I'm going on His. Amen? That's right. And if you got any sense, that's the same thing you'll do. You'll realize, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I failed you. Lord, the best I can do is not enough. But my faith is in You. And the book said in Romans chapter 3 and 4, To him that believeth, his faith is counted for righteousness. If I believe that Christ died for me and I trust what He did for me on the cross, my faith counts for righteousness in the sight of God. That's called imputation. That's called He took my place. That's called trusting the Savior. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me He died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied for me. Amen. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. G. G. Campbell Morgan. Another great preacher you should know. If you go to the right school, you will. G. Campbell Morgan had a great revival campaign. At that campaign, a hardened, wicked criminal came to the altar seeking the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Brother Morgan got down, prayed with him, pointed him to the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And the guy got victory and he was crying. And it just so happened they sung a few more songs, the invitation went out, and the mayor of the town was there. And the mayor, who had a reputation for being an extremely high moral character, upright, honest, I mean right, as anybody can be, came down the aisle and got down and accepted the Lord. He went over here and pointed him to the same Savior that he pointed that old criminal to. And they got up. And guess what, people? They found out that that, judge, that mayor, as a judge, had sentenced that feller to jail for some crime he committed here a while back. He got out, got saved, he got saved, and they was shaking hands and tears and hugging each other. And, uh, and Brother Morgan said, he said, there is the upright moral judge, the equivalent of Nicodemus in the Bible, looked to Jesus and got saved. There's the old wicked criminal, like a thief on the cross. He looked to Jesus and he got saved. They both, he, he put him in jail. And now they're both coming as a sinner and look to the same Savior. You know what that means? The ground is level at the foot of the cross. There ain't no big shots. There ain't no little shots. There ain't no big, poor, black, white, rich, ugly, ugly, mean, smart, pretty. We're all just a bunch of sinners and we're all level at the foot of the cross. Salvation is simplified. You understand that, don't you? Same remedy. Never forget reading. This is for you Christians and I'm through read a story about this man. He had been saved a while and he come to the preacher one day and he said, Preacher, something's wrong with me. Now listen to this. You need it. He said, Preacher, something's wrong with me. He said, What is it? He said, 
I don't know. He said, when I first got saved, I had joy. I had a, a shout in my soul. I enjoyed being saved. Man, I don't. He said, now I just, I, I just, I don't, I can't find God. It's like the Lord's left me and I, I just don't enjoy being saved. And the preacher said, good. He said, what? I was shouting all over the place a few months ago. Now I feel dead and backslid and cold and everything. And you say good? And the preacher said, yeah. He said, let me tell you what you're doing. He said, what you was doing, you was worshiping on your emotions and on your feelings. And he said, now that you don't feel anything, you think God's left you. But he said, God, it's got nothing to do. Hear me. Hear me, Southerners. You're bad for this. It's got nothing to do with your feelings. Sometimes we think, well, I feel good. Glory to God, good to be saved. Lord's with me. And then the next day we think, man, I just feel bad and I'm down. It's raining. Ugh. Listen, you're just as saved on them days as you are them days when everything's going right. Am I right? Say amen. And he said, it's just like going through a tunnel. He said, have you ever went through a tunnel? And the guy said, yeah. You know how you go when you're going through a tunnel? You don't go crazy and kill yourself. You know why? Because you know you're coming out of it. You're coming out of that thing, buddy. They're coming out. I go in, I'd hate to go in a tunnel and think, I ain't never coming out of it. I'd turn around and try to back out of there. But the only thing good about a tunnel is you know. You can't see the sun. You can't feel the warmth. But glory to God, you know it's coming out over there pretty soon. I'm telling you, if you're in a valley tonight, if you're going through a hard time, if you're going through a storm, you're just in a tunnel. Hang in there. Hang in there. There's light coming. You're coming out one of these days. You're just as saved. And by the time he told him that story, that guy said, it's all right now. I'm shouting happy again. Because you don't go by feelings. Be careful of trying to feel like you used to feel to get a blessing. Because them feelings ain't what got you happy. No, it's believing Jesus saved you is what gets you happy. Get back to just believing it and quit worrying about how you feel and you'll feel good again. Amen? That's five things accomplished at Calvary. They're coming. I'm going to get that song. I don't know what page it's on. Years. I spent in vanity and pride. Knowing not was for me he died at Calvary. I don't know your situation here tonight, but I do believe there's people here tonight that needs to get down here and get down on your knees and say, God, I've been fooling around a little bit. I've been going astray. I ain't been reading my Bible. I've been watching stuff on TV that ain't right. I've been sort of dragging my feet. I, mean, I ain't been working my bus route right. I ain't been teaching my Sunday school class right. God, I ain't been being a good example in front of my kids. God, I ain't been doing... God, I'm going to get down there. I'm going to serve you. It's got nothing to do with my feelings. It's because of what you did for me on the cross. If you're here tonight, you've never been saved. Best thing in the world is to get saved. Let's stand this evening. We're going to sing it tonight. Meet me here in the altar. Let's pray. Let's worship the Lord. And let's have a good time worshiping Him. What He did for us. Let's sing Years I sin. Come on, come on, let's pray tonight. Be me up here, let's pray a little while. That's right, come on, come on, let's get an altar and pray tonight. Let's get in here and serve God. Come on. Calvary. Everybody, mercy, there was great and grace was free. Pardon, there was multiplied to me. There my burden so fell in. By God's word at last my sin I learned Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary right, everybody, go loud. Mercy there was saved and grace was free Pardon there was multiplied to me there my burden so oh, heavy you're going to be saved tonight, ain't it? At Calvary Oh, we ought to worship it I'm glad I'm saved How about you? Woo!